Hey, I'm Tyler, and I want to help you crush the T's. In this video, we're going to figure out if you're really learning the stuff that you need to pass the test. Particularly for the chemistry, a lot of people read books and they watch videos, but they're not sure if they're actually learning or retaining anything important. Maybe you feel this way. It's super, super common. So, let's see if you're learning. We'll do a tease practice question on a really high priority, essential topic that pretty much always shows up on the test. If you get it right, awesome. But if you don't know how to answer it, don't worry. I'll walk you through everything that you need to know step by step. Okay, here it is. Which of the following is true of liquids? A. They have indefinite shape and indefinite volume. B. They have definite shape and indefinite volume. C. They have indefinite shape and definite volume. And D. They have definite shape and definite volume. And the answer is C. Indefinite shape and definite volume. Okay, so if you got it right, good job. For this topic, the way you're studying is working. Keep it up. If you like to work through problems like these, you can get more by following the links in the description below this video. Okay, but if you didn't get it right, or you didn't even know where to start because some of these words sounded like gibberish, don't worry. Here's what we're going to do. Let me walk you through everything that you need to know to answer this question. I promise it will make sense when we're done. Ready? Okay. Which of the following is true of liquids? Let's start here. If you look over the answer choices, you'll see that we're talking about shape and volume. And we need to know whether they are definite or indefinite. So what does all this mean? Let's start with shape. If something has a definite shape, that means that the shape cannot easily change. On the other hand, an indefinite shape means that the shape of something can easily change. So what do you think? For liquids, can the shape easily change? Yes, it can. Here, we have water in a beaker. And the water has the shape of the beaker. Okay, then, if we take that water and pour it into a new container, into this flask, the shape changes. Now, the water has this kind of triangle shape of the flask. We often say that liquids take the shape of their container. So yes, the shape easily changes. Pour liquid into a new container, and it gets a new shape. And that means that liquids have an indefinite shape. The shape of a liquid can easily change. Let's look back at the answer choices. Can we eliminate anything yet? Yeah, we can. We can actually get rid of half of the answers. We can cross off B and we can cross off D because they both say definite shape and we know that for liquids, shape is indefinite. Okay, cross off B and D. We're halfway there. Next, what about volume? Well, first off, volume is the amount of space that something takes up. Something has a definite volume if the amount of space it takes up cannot change. And something has an indefinite volume if the amount of space that it takes up can change. So how about the volume of liquids? Well, the amount of space they take up, does it just randomly change? No. You don't watch a liquid randomly just getting bigger to take up more space or randomly shrinking down to take up less space. If you have, say, like 100 milliliters of water, it stays 100 milliliters even when you pour it from one container to another. And when we're talking about volume here and changing, I'm not talking about, you know, like, 
like, like evaporation, right? Where you have a glass of water and over two or three days, some of that water evaporates and slow. And so the, the, the level in that water kind of slowly goes down. No, no, I'm, I'm not talking about that. When we talk about definite or indefinite volume, we're talking about whether the volume of that liquid changes over just a couple minutes. And no, the volume of liquid doesn't usually change. That's why it is definite. Definite volume, the amount of space that a liquid takes up cannot usually change. So to sum it up, liquids have indefinite shape and definite volume. Let's look back at the answer choices. We already eliminated B and D. Take a look at C. Indefinite shape and definite volume. Looks right to me. And if you wanted to be extra careful, choice A has indefinite shape and indefinite volume. We know that's wrong. Indefinite volume, cross it off because we know that liquids have definite volume. Get rid of A and choice C it is. Now, what should you study to prepare for questions like this? On the T's, it's super important to know about the shape and volume for each state of matter. Solids, liquids, and gases. Shape and volume, you want to know whether they are definite or indefinite. You also want to know what it means if shape is definite or if shape is indefinite. We already talked about that. You also want to know what it means if volume is definite or volume is indefinite, because the T's might not always use those exact words, but they might ask, can the volume of a liquid change under certain situations? Or can the shape of a gas change under certain situations? It's just a different way of asking about definite or indefinite shape and volume. So make sure that you know all of the stuff going into the T's, super high priority topic. Okay, now listen. When we walked through that explanation, could you feel yourself learning? Like, I bet this makes sense now, and I bet you're actually going to remember it. When I teach, I really try to go slow, patiently, and step by step, because that's what most people need to really learn. Look, I know there are fast videos out there that are full of jargon and they're super common, but they are hurting you because most people can't learn and retain information from stuff like that. If you like how I teach, I can teach you all the chemistry you need for the T's step by step, okay? We're gonna go patiently, we're gonna go step by step from the beginning and actually learn so the stuff makes sense, so that you remember it. Ready to get going? Here's what you're gonna do. Go down into the links in the video description and go to video one. Find where it says video one, click it, and just start watching. I'll show you everything you need, tell you exactly what to do. Okay, sound good? Ready to actually learn? Ready to actually remember this stuff? Check out the link below, and I will see you at video one. Together, we're going to crush the tease.